what? That's a deception tactic where you <laughs> temporarily deny whiteness. All of a sudden, he's not white no more. I'm not oh. white. I'm Jewish. I'm not white. I'm oh. American. I'm not white. I'm Hispanic. <laughs> oh, that's but what that's I've seen the sorts of things that you're talking about. I happen to be an honorary member of an indigenous family, so mm. don't tell me about what I should go see with regards to oppression. You, you don't know anything about me. You asked me a question, I gave you a response. Yeah. You gave me a generic response, it's a generic, generic race-based it's Taylor response. You. Jordan Peterson, yeah. I would like for you to come with me, Michael Eric Dyson, to a black Baptist church. You been to I, one of those? I would, I would be happy to do that. By okay, the way. all right, I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to hook you up. Okay, right. good. We'll make sure that happens. I knew Jordan Peterson was going to bring that up. Oh, I have seen the sorts of things you talked about. I am an honorary member of a Canadian indigenous tribe. Did you know that? So I know all about this stuff. He, the, uh, let me just start by dismantling the idea that Peterson is an honorary member of an indigenous tribe. So this reporting is from the walrus.ca. Peterson's connections to the uh, Kowak, I'm just going to call them the Kowak tribe since I can't pronounce that. Peterson's connections to the Kowak people derive from his friendship and traditional bonds with the family of Charles Joseph, an accomplished Kowak carver from Mam tribe. Earlier this year, I spoke to Charles Joseph, who confirms that Peterson is not a member of the Kowak people, nor the Mam tribe. So, Peterson is not a member of an indigenous tribe. What we have out here is a bunch of pretendians. You have a bunch of pretendians. You say they don't look white. Those dudes do look white. You have a bunch of pretendians. You have a bunch of people who are classified as white who claim they have 128th Native American in them. You understand me? When all, whenever you see all of these pale Native Americans, quote unquote, most of them, most of them, most of them are faking. I'm going to say it again, and I hope some of y'all are listening. Most of you are pretendians, and you are faking, faking, faking. I'm going to say it again. I don't care how y'all, they, they've been pretending to be all outraged because I've been saying this on Twitter and I've been coming with receipts. Elizabeth Warren is one of them. These people who are white and then they call themselves Native American. They never, you never denounce your whiteness. They all, they, they are the original Rachel Dolezals. They get all the benefits of white society and then they go get some of the benefits of being a so-called fake ass Native American. Um, that goes back to the $5 Indians. Back in the day, and understand this, I'm a historian. I do movies on this shit. Back in the day, if you look at Native Americans before the year 1900, they were damn near all black looking. Let's be real. Native Americans were so damn dark, they almost all looked black. That's why many of the dark ones were reclassified as freedmen's in, in many cases. So they were classified, reclassified as black so they wouldn't get all the benefits that the, the Native Americans who were intermixed with the white colonizers. That's when they had the Dolls Rolls. They had something called the Dolls Rolls, which was an Indian census where they were going to allot land and resources to people classified as Native Americans. So a bunch of white supremacists went down there to the census rolls places, wherever they did the census, the dolls rolls. They would give $5 under the table and say, hey, put my name on the Indian census and list me as a Native American. This is where we get the term $5 Indian. So when money started being distributed, all of a sudden, all these white supremacists started claiming Native Americans. And all the ones who are real light that you see now are the descendants of these fake fucking pretendians. These are facts. You don't go from being jet black to lily white overnight. 
I'm telling you, Native Americans were darker than me. And I was pointing this out because I was been debating people all day. I had one fake $5 pretendian Indian say to me today, this white lady who claims to be Mojave or whatever the fuck she claimed to be. Her excuse, because I was hitting her with pictures. I'm like, okay, this is a Native American before the... I'm hitting them with pictures of show, showing how dark these Native Americans were. She was like, well, the reason why my people got so light is because after a while we weren't outside all the time. Like, if you don't sit your ass down. <laughs> so she said, because the Native Americans stopped being outside all the time, they got lighter. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Man, please. All the, the white splaining bullshit logic that they have. I'm like, yeah, if, if, oh, so we're going with, so I hit it with that. So we're going to do the climate thing because let's go to the East Coast where the climate was cold. I'm showing you dark black ass Indians on the East Coast. How come they didn't get light? How come the, the Indians in Canada didn't get light? Or the indigenous Eskimos, how come they were dark as hell in the snow? Then they block it when you start pointing out facts, when you start hitting them with the, 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 the facts. These people that you see, Native Americans were not pale-skinned family. They were not. They were not. There were no pale-skinned Indians before the 1900s. It just wasn't. That's These are facts. Especially the Seminoles. Then all the Seminoles were black. Look at the contemporary writing of the Seminoles. Seminole comes from the word Cimarron, mean, meaning runaway. The Seminoles were runaway black people who mixed in. So they were damn near all black. So now you look at the Seminoles, they all white. Now, I mean, this, we're talking history. This ain't my opinion, because when you start talking history, they start acting funny style. The Washita down there in New Orleans, in, in Louisiana. I was in Louisiana. They were talking about the Washita, the black-ass Indians down there, the Native American people. You understand? I mean, Native Americans, I'm telling you, they were our color based on contemporary times. Christopher Columbus... In his journal, him and his sons, they would refer to them as Ethiopians. They would talk about how they look like the Ethiopians. That's what they used to call Africans. There's a reason why they thought they were in India when they came over here and saw these black ass folks with the silky hair. They thought they were in India. You understand? I mean, the, they use a, a, a pale person stood out among Native Americans. You, They said pale face. That was an epithet. They were not white. Copper color. Copper color. Copper is brown, dark brown. See, once those casino checks started coming through, all of a sudden, we start getting the Justin Timberlake Indians. You understand? But the white supremacy, and th look, there's a book right here. Look, look, look. I've talked about this book before. Here's a book right here talking about the finesse called Killers of the Flower Moon, The Assange Murders and the Birth of the FBI. This book is about some women who had, had Indian territory. They became very wealthy with, with oil because of some of the oil wells were on Indian land. So white supremacist males deliberately married into their families and started killing the women and laying claim to the tribe. You have this book. I mean, I got all types of, this is a whole book on the, the scam. One of the, one of the scams. This is just one of their scams, how they would finesse Native American tribes out of their land, out of their money, and out of their lineage, and they would lay claims to these tribes, the white supremacists. So this book breaks down just one of the hustles. There's several books on the scam and the way these white supremacists would finesse. And they do it today. Look at so many people. You got Steven Seagal, 
who tries to claim Native American. Steven Seagal ain't no goddamn Native American. One of the most famous Native Americans, and we talked about this in Hidden Colors 2, it was the crying Indian from the commercials back in the 70s, Iron Eyes Cody. He was the famous Native American. Quote, unquote. He went around in feathers and all that shit. Iron Eyes Cody was real famous. He was the most famous Native American in the country. I mean, they paraded him around all over the place. Found out this motherfucker didn't have one damn drop of Native American blood in him. Not one. His ass was Sicilian. Both of his parents were from Sicily. It was a big lifelong finesse. It was Italian. Yeah, it was Italian. Sicilian, Italian, same thing. He was Italian. Dog the Bounty Hunter. He's another one. Y'all notice he loves to try to claim to be Cherokee. D Dog the Bounty Hunter. And I want y'all to look this up about this racist piece of shit. Dog the Bounty Hunter, his grandmother is Polish. His family is from Poland. His grandmother came over here to the States and started selling Native American artifacts and trinkets. And because she would sell these Native American trinkets, she would say, oh, let, me, let me dress up as a Native American. So she would dress up as a Native American and start selling these trinkets as a bigger selling point. So people started to assume she was Native American and she just took on the role of a Native American and just kind of ran with it. That bitch wasn't nowhere near Native American. She's from Poland. His ass ain't Native American at all. Not one damn drop. Not nothing. You look up what I'm saying. Dog the Bounty Hunter ain't got one damn drop of Native American in him. Not one. Not one. His family's Polish. His fake pretending grandmother was Polish, pretending to be a Native American. And this is the hustle. When you start calling them out, these $5 Indians, on being pretendians, then they'll start pushing the envelope. They'll start moving the envelope around because once you start pointing out, once you start, because they know they're scamming. The name of the game is for us to not know the scam. So once you start pointing out lineages and genealogy and you start pointing out the dolls' roles and you start pointing out the scams that they've been participating in that's well documented, then they'll say, well, being a Native American is not just about blood quantum. It's about kinship and it's about customs. Watch when they say that. All right? Watch when they say that. Because what they're saying is, yeah, I know that I'm not a blood descendant of the Native Americans. Yeah, I know I'm fake, but the Natives, they accepted me because I practiced their culture. So I'm, I've been adopted into the tribe. So that's the new hustle. It, well, not new. I ain't going to say new. That's an old hustle. But just watch the words. Watch the words. Well, legally, I'm a Native American because I was adopted into the tribe. Watch the words that they use. Yeah, it's that I'm an honorary Indian, so that means I'm the real Indian. I'm, I'm, I'm an honorary, so I, I'm supposed to get the casinos and the benefits because that's the scam. Basically, some I'm white and I say so bullshit. Because there was a case where this one guy, this one white dude pretending to be a Native American, he was a lawyer and he was finessing all these casinos. And even the native, the real natives was like, hey man, you ain't, you ain't one of us. And he was like, oh yeah, yes I am. I was adopted into the tribe. So I'm supposed to get one of those casinos. See, when it comes to these fake pretendians, the pale face pretendians, who ain't got one drop of Native American blood in them. It's all about, well, I enrolled into the tribe and they adopted me, so I'm Native now. So uh, legally, I'm a Native American. But when it comes to Black folks who do have Native American bloodlines, for real, for real, they make Black folks jump through all types of hoops. 
Oh, you got to show some DNA. Oh, you got to have some, some blood receipts. Oh, they make black folks jump through all types of hoops. When these treaties specify that black people are supposed to get some of the same benefits as some of these other Native Americans because the black freedmen were allowed some of the same allotments. And many of the so-called five civilized tribes, they go out of their way to expel black members. They were doing that for a long time. They would go out of their way to expel black members.